the next talk, which is uh, from Dr. Bill Amoria, who's going to talk to us about recurrence of melanoma after surgery. Great. Thank you. Um, and thanks for being with us tonight. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully that's working. Great. Well, I would like to talk a little bit about melanoma recurrence after surgery, and uh, I'll try to make up some time here for us. Uh, a little bit about melanoma recurrence and how, where it can happen. Um, if you can imagine that an initial melanoma was uh, near the elbow, uh, we call it a local recurrence if it uh, occurs in that uh, general area, and that occurs in about 20% of patients. Regional recurrences can occur along the pathway uh, a little further away from that initial spot, or of course in the lymph nodes, and that's about half of the patients. And then distant metastases uh, can occur in a number of spots, uh, and that's about 30% of the patients. We, um, uh, I'll show you a couple pictures here of what recurrences can look like uh, after having had surgery for melanoma. They can be like this, where they're uh, black or brown, uh, they can be single or multiple, uh, but people often think that they will be black or brown, whereas in reality, most frequently they're not. They're more of this pink color. Um, and here are a couple examples. You can tell they're pretty subtle in some cases, but they're usually what I describe as a pimple that doesn't go away. Um, you can see underneath the skin here that there are some pigmented nodules that they can be below the skin or above the skin like these. Um, and if, this is the incision here you can see from the prior surgery. And this is, uh, these are all, these pink lesions are a recurrence as well. Um, risk of, uh, the risk of melanoma recurrence is a, is a difficult topic because it really depends on the stage of the melanoma um, uh, initially. And so the risk of recurrence overall is somewhere around 4%, 2 to 5% has been quoted in the literature. But of course, less advanced initial melanomas are less likely to recur and they recur slower. Most recur by about four and a half years, uh, but there are subsets that do recur in the five to 10 year period from diagnosis. Um, of course, more advanced initial melanomas uh, are more likely to recur and they recur faster, usually by about two and a half years. And then we often talk about that, you know, it's not really a, a recurrence per se, but you could get another melanoma. And what's that risk if you've had one? Um, uh, again, it ranges, but it usually is somewhere uh, in the, you know, higher single digits, nine, 10% as the number that we talk, typically talk about. But um, these lesions, luckily, because patients are being watched uh, very closely by uh, their dermatologists, um, and their surgical oncologists are less advanced and thinner uh, disease, and so they're more readily treated. So what are the risk factors for recurrence? Certainly, if you had a thicker primary melanoma, if you look over here, we talk about on the side of this image, uh, the, the tumor is shown here. We talk about melanoma and how deep it goes into the skin. Um, and if it's deeper uh, and thicker, that is a higher risk. Certainly, uh, the margins or the width around the original tumor that was taken out at the initial surgery and the quality of the initial surgery matters and risk factors for recurrence. Head and neck melanomas are more likely to recur and, are mel and so are melanomas that have adverse features. So when we look at them under the microscope, we can see certain things that suggest that they're more aggressive. Desmoplastic melanomas are a subtype uh, that are relatively infrequent, but they do recur more frequently. And if there are small little lesions, small little spots on the side of your melanoma that, that are called satellitosis, that, those also have a higher risk factor for recurrence. What do you do if you have a suspected recurrence? You obviously go see your dermatologist or your surgical oncologist and they will examine the area. Most likely they'll do some sort of biopsy or excision. Um, if it's really tiny, we use this uh, green punch tool, which is essentially a circular knife and it can be done in the office. And it cores out just that little lesion on its own. If it's a bigger area, it may require surgery, as you see here on the right, uh, to remove the area. If it's a deeper nodule um, or it's in the lymph nodes, we'll do something like this ultrasound image that you see in the middle of the screen here, where you can see the nodule and then this, this line coming in at an angle is actually the needle going right into the uh, nodule to biopsy it. Uh, so we can then take this information and look at it under the microscope and, and figure out what it is and what else may need to be done. Um, we'll also frequently uh, do what we call staging or take a look at your whole body to see whether there's been uh, spread elsewhere. Um, and uh, hopefully that's unlikely, but it's a, it's a good time to check. How do we treat recurrences? Uh, certainly surgical resection is the preference uh, for that if it can be removed. 
Um, we may also uh, check your lymph nodes at that time because if, uh, a recurrence can also go from somewhere near the skin or near the original spike to the lymph nodes. Um, and that's a decision that has to be made with you and your surgeon depending on the type of recurrence. We can also do what's done here uh, and inject the lesions with a, with a new um, um, a newer um, set of uh, therapies. Uh, one's called TVEC. Um, it actually uh, leads to destruction locally of the tumor that we inject, but it also engenders a, a distant response. And uh, sort of, uh, we believe that it uh, uh, activates your immune system to help fight off the, the tumors elsewhere. Um, we can do something called limb infusion. And in if there's a lot of disease in an extremity uh, on an arm or a leg, uh, we can put tourniquets on the extremity and introduce a high dose of chemotherapy um, that's only seen by that extremity. And that's one uh, way, although fairly infrequent, uh, that we, we need to employ to treat uh, recurrences. Uh, but you can see that here on the far right where we have uh, catheters going into the arm and, and can treat an, a large number of uh, nodules and diseases at the same time that may not be amenable to surgery. Um, we can do radiation in some circumstances and then uh, with the introduction of uh, over the last uh, five or seven years of far more effective therapies, uh, systemic therapy uh, is certainly a frequent consideration. Uh, so immunotherapy, um, um, and I think we'll hear a lot about that in the subsequent talks. So um, I think I'll pause there. I just wanted to give a brief overview, uh, overview of uh, uh, the risk of recurrence after surgery.